Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Alex B. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. We're going to zip through the news today because I have something a little special in the back half of this video. For those of you that like to play around with the Tesla service mode, there are some new features coming, including seat belts, the windows, and HVAC. Just want to remind everybody, Tesla service mode really should only be for those that actually know what they're doing. This will be linked below. Here we have a chart from Roland, and I love providing the high level sales data. So, this is year to date in Germany. As you can see, top brands VW, Mercedes, Audi, and BMW. No surprise, Tesla still well back here. And when it comes to model sales year to date, the Model Y is the fourth best selling vehicle overall. But again, looking at the green for BEV only, Model Y far and away in first place. Speaking of German BEV sales, the subsidies were dropped fairly significantly at the beginning of this year. Despite that though, there was a rebound in sales for the month of May as EVs held a 17.3% market share. And yes, that number was for full battery electric. Plug-in hybrids were an additional 5.6% for May. Here we have Tesla looking to donate $3.8 million to fix some roads, but these roads will actually be leading to Tesla's new lithium refinery in the area. A Nueces County commissioner said that these improvements will accommodate the heavy duty equipment and vehicles passing through to Tesla's lithium refinery. And he said, we feel the road improvements are needed and maybe something we typically could not afford. So sounds like a win-win situation. Here we have an article from Benchmark and they're saying the announced gigafactory factories in the United States have increased by 60% since the IRA was passed. Benchmark ran some numbers on what the IRA may end up costing and by 2032 they're saying it could be $150 billion which is five times higher than what the Congressional Budget Office had estimated at the time of the deal. And yes, this number is just for the advanced manufacturing production credit. It's a long way away, but Benchmark is saying by 2031, a total of 59 million EVs could be eligible for at least half of the $7,500 credit, that would translate to $220 billion of cumulative funding by 2031. The CBO estimate for that side of the deal, 7.5 billion or 380,000 EVs in total. There are two takeaways. First, the actual cost for the IRA may be much higher than they were anticipating. And two, it'll be important to watch who's in office and how they handle the IRA because this level of funding should not be just expected or guaranteed for the next decade, although that is how it sits now. But there's a reason that people are scrambling and racing to get this money now. The Prime Minister of Mongolia tweeted out he just had a conversation with Elon Musk, discussed potential partnerships, including internships for talented Mongolian engineers at Tesla. They talked about rare earth elements and industrial industrial scale mining. You may be thinking, wait, I thought Tesla was not using rare earth elements anymore. Well, that's in their next gen drive unit. So for now, they're still using them on current vehicles. In this video, they were also talking about Starlink. Given that Mongolia has extensive deposits of rare earth minerals and copper, my guess is most likely a lot to do with mining. Mining in Mongolia, refining in China for Giga Shanghai would definitely make sense. Looking at the historical car sales in Mongolia, I certainly would not be expecting this as a location for a gigafactory. Mongolia has plenty of land, but only about 3 million inhabitants. And relative to the United States, you could definitely say it's underdeveloped when it comes to technology and infrastructure. The Volvo EX30 is definitely going to be a car to watch. This should be available delivery starting in the United States in 2024, maybe around the summer. They're calling this an SUV, but as you can tell by the video, it's really more of a CUV. This vehicle is set to start at around $36,000 get about 275 miles of range and do zero to 60 in about 3.4 seconds. Styling is nice, but unfortunately it does have a very small frunk, if you could call it that. It does have a hatchback, which is nice and at least decent storage for a smaller vehicle. The only major drawback I'm seeing right now of this vehicle is that it's set to be produced in China, meaning it will not qualify for the federal tax incentives. Will they make this in South Carolina in the future? Maybe, but nothing has been said on that. 
Reservations are indeed open right now. We've heard about this before, Tesla continuing to innovate with its direct to consumer model. Now customers can take delivery directly from the train, which is eliminating trucks, which is nice. But I would love to hear how the experience goes for any consumers that are actually taking delivery at one of these delivery points, not at a delivery center. So if you or anyone you know does, please shoot me an email. I wanted to pass this one along because we always hear about the United States and China when it comes to battery energy storage deployments. So this is good to see that outside of those two regions. Now we have Belgium into the mix, this time teaming up with Tesla for a 200 megawatt hour project, which is about 50 Tesla megapacks. Further, this company, Aneco, said it will not stop with this project. Several hundred megawatts will follow in the coming years. Thanks to attractive Belgian investment policy and exemption from transmission tariffs and excise duties, the largest battery parks in Europe are being built in Belgium, one to watch. Just a heads up, right now in Tesla's inventory, some Model 3 performance variants are being discounted over $3,000. So if you've been looking, this seems like a pretty good time. Some of you may remember one of my most liked videos was a discussion with a CEO from the mining industry, and today I have more of the same. You're about to hear from a geoscientist with decades of experience in the industry who has worked all over the world. Now he is at FE Battery Metals, a junior lithium company operating up in Quebec, and we know Tesla has their hand all over the Canadian region. We're right beside what's called the North American Lithium Mine. Uh, it was in existence a long time ago called Quebec Lithium Mine. However, it was purchased by Piedmont and Sayona Mining. And in March of this year, they produced the, the first amount of concentrate. So mm -hmm. it's a very exciting thing that we finally have, boom, a, a mine online. And it's mm -hmm. right next door to us. I mean, we're not only adjacent, we're actually a uh, slightly part of their workings are on our territory. So oh, really? nice. we're real neighbors in, in this. Okay. And now, so is that one of only a handful in North America right now? Is that accurate? There's presently two mines in operation that produce lithium in Canada. In okay. the U S there are two mines that produce lithium. Uh, one is the Clayton Valley, which is uh, a brine de type deposit. And you can see it from space. If you go to Google Earth, you can see these great big uh, settling ponds that it has. And the other is Piedmont Lithium's area in the Carolinas. Uh, they've been there for years. However, in truth, if you take a look at the resources they have there, they're not giant. So Piedmont has made great efforts to run out and do um, either like a joint venture in the case of the North American Lithium Mine or perhaps uh, acquiring large portions of a company like they've done in Ghana uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Atlantic Lithium um, doing deals. So they're, I think, really cognizant of the fact they have to build and grow their, their internal resources. Yeah, Piedmont has a, a deal with Tesla. Um, Ford, who just uh, signed a deal with um, Namaska, the Namaska Lithium Project, and that's, I don't know, that might take three, four years to get in production. So it really goes to show you how the automotive industry is getting ahead of this game, where they're seeing a project that's got value and merit, and they're putting money into it. So they can say, look, I want offtake from that mine. I want it coming directly to, you know, our battery needs. It is interesting, though, like, you know, because of the Piedmont Tesla um affiliation and working together i mean we're right in their backyard for piedmont i mean there's no better place for our ore to go than down the road um one mile to the mine so mm -hmm. that would that would give a boost to the north american lithium mine in terms of its output potential or its longevity in terms of how many years it could operate so Makes sense. Uh, that would be the most logical place for us to go. And, you know, Piedmont, by the way, I, I mentioned it before, they've been very aggressive and in, in stepping out to, I know, a project in Northwest Ontario they've, they've uh, participated in. Companies like Lithium Americas as well have made investments into junior companies uh, to the tune of, you know, 20, 25% of the company, things like that. So we've seen that as well. Um, that it's it's going to be a, a whole new world. I mean, Chile recently um, nationalized their lithium. I don't know if you're aware of that, 
But the, the companies like Albemarle and SQM uh, could be really hurt by such moves. And mm -hmm. they would be looking for perhaps more solid jurisdictions like in the US or Canada that aren't going to nationalize their uh, lithium. I mean, mm -hmm. lithium's basically been nationalized in Mexico. Um, Bolivia is always kind of threatening to do it. Um, and after Chile's move, maybe they will. For companies um, trying to feed the EV growth of North America, um, you know, Canada, US look like great targets. You look, I think we're the largest claim holder within the region of the North American lithium mine. I mean, we have a crazy amount of claims. Uh, we've done some joint ventures with some of those claim blocks because, you know, we can't basically do it all ourselves. We, uh, we could have some partners, partnerships developed in their area. Fraser Institute puts out a report on mining jurisdictions worldwide every year. And places like Nevada, Ontario, Quebec rank pretty high, Western Australia as well, because just the whole government situation is used to mining, understanding mining, and um, you know, the obstacles to getting a mine permitted aren't the same as if you, let's say, were too close to a national park or something like this. That can be really terrible and could, could kill your projects. In terms of also the government backing is extremely important. In this particular case, you know, the US and Canada are part of a, an agreement for critical um, battery metals. And there is a strong focus, more than I've ever seen except for wartime, into backing the mining industry for those metals. Well, I'm really excited where we are right now. I mean, we're, um, we've drilled quite a number of uh, holes at Augustus. That's the project directly beside the North American lithium mine. And um, we just recently started computer modeling this. So we we've we've told people in news releases that we're we're trying to build a maiden resource for the project and that's always uh, a real good lift for investors when a company goes from essentially having nothing but uh hope and and blue sky to actually having a concrete uh resource so that's going to be really exciting mm -hmm. we recently also um finished a new magnetometer survey that was carried by a drone, so it was really accurate in terms of uh, staying uh, at a very low level to the ground. So it's a little bit more accurate than the helicopter-borne survey that we did a year ago. And we're, we're seeing some awesome structures there, and some prospecting has shown there's pegmatites in that region. Um, obviously, you must be aware of the fact that all these companies, Ford, GM, etc., they're electrifying their fleet in a big way. Mm -hmm. and the demand for lithium is going to be crazy. So uh, yeah. it's going to be a really exciting, let's say, eight to 10 years for investors who are, okay. who are looking at, you know, uh, companies similar to ours that have good lithium projects and will li likely be gobbled up in, in that mm -hmm. time frame. So if you guys would like to learn more about FE and the Frasier Report, I'll have it all linked in the description below. For this one, please like the video as a way to say thank you for Craig for taking the time to sit down with us. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters.